Namao Vishnu Padaya Krishna Prishtaya Bhutale Srimati Bhakti Vedanta Swaminiti Namane Namaste Sarasati Devi Gauravani Precharine Nirvisheshna Sunyavadi Paschacha Deshatarine Vanchakalpa Terubhyasya Kripa Sindhu Bhayevacha Patitanam Pavanebhyo Vaishnavibhyo Namo Namaha Jai Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Shri Atvaita Gadadhar Shri Vasade Gaur Bhakta Vinda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Hare So we w welcome everyone to our Bhakti Shastri course. We're on the final section of the Bhagavad Gita. Yesterday we looked at chapter 15. I want to spend some more time just over, overviewing chapter 15 and then we'll go on to chapter six, 16. Uh, maybe we'll I'll share the screen and then If everyone has a text, everyone has a text, right? Okay, so we'll... Yes, one. All right, so going through the 15th chapter uh, from the beginning, first verse. The... The purport, Srila Prabhupada's purport, if we look at the third paragraph, paragraph number three of the purport, this process of extrication should be understood. In the previous chapter, it has been explained that there are many processes by which to get out of the material entanglement. And up to the thirteenth chapter, we have seen that devotional service to the Lord, Supreme Lord is the best way. Now the basic principle of devotional service is detachment from material activities and attachment to the transcendental service of the Lord. The process of breaking attachment to the material world is discussed in the beginning of this chapter. So, this uh, 15th chapter connects to the 14th chapter. Remember, 14th chapter was describing the three modes of material nature. And hearing the, 15th, uh, the 14th chapter, hearing about the three modes of material nature and how entangled we are in the modes, it's important for us to get det detached. So as Prabhupada says, the basic principle of devotional service is detachment from material activities and attachment to the transcendental service of the Lord. So with this in mind, Lord Krishna is describing this imperishable banyan tree, very special tree has its roots upward, branches down, and leaves are the Vedic hymns. One who knows this tree is the knower of the Vedas. So the different parts of the tree are important. We should be familiar with them. Right? We're told about the, the leaves are like the Vedic hymns. Prabhupada writes in the purport about the Vedic hymns they're meant for elevating oneself. 
So hard to understand how, how are leaves going to elevate herself. Anyway, the, the point is the trees, the beauty of the tree is there in the leaves. A tree without leaves is not beautiful. So the same way people become attracted to the material world, the beauty of the Vedas, the Vedic hymns for enjoying. Then Prabhupada explains, the tree's roots grow upward because they begin from where Brahma is located, the topmost planet of this universe. If one can understand this indestructible tree of illusion, then one can get out of it. <laughs> so it's important for us to understand it if we want to get out of it, to get free of it, we have to understand. So the root is up and we, we hear that roots are all the way up to, they begin from where Brahma, Lord Brahma is located. And then different parts of the tree are identified. We should be familiar with the different, for example, the fruit, the fruits of the tree. Prabhupada explains here, the fruits represent the results of the living entity's activities, namely religion, economic development, sense gratification and liberation. Then Prabhupada discusses about the nature of this tree. He says, uh, we do not see this kind of tree in the world, but then Prabhupada gives the example that this tree can be found beside a reservoir of water. We can see the tree on the bank reflect in, on the water, branches down and the roots up. In other words, the tree of this world is only a reflection of the real tree of the spiritual world. This reflection of the spiritual world is situated on desire, just as a tree's reflection is situated on water. Desire is the cause of things being situated in this reflected material light. One who wants to get out of this material existence must know that this tree thoroughly, it, they must know this tree thoroughly through analytical study, then he can cut off his relationship with it. So the tree is situated on desire and then how is the tree nourished? So Prabhupada speaks about that. He talks about the impersonalists and how they consider the tree. Oh. Okay, and the origin of the tree, the reflection is, is material reflection of the real tree has to be cut off. When it is person, when it is said that a person knows the Vedas, it is assumed that he knows how to cut off attachment to this material world. If one knows that process, he actually knows the Vedas. And then going on to text number two, a little more information about the tree, that the branches are down, right? Adha, Adha Saka, downward branches and upward roots. Urva Mulam Adasaka. 
The twigs are the objects of the senses. And the objects of the senses mean taste, smell, touch, these things. And the tree also has roots going down, so it's not all the roots are up. We heard the root is up, but we hear also now this tree also has roots going down. And these are bound to the fruit of actions of human society. Then in the purport, in the first paragraph, Srila Prabhupada explains how in different parts of the tree, different living entities are situated. In the lower parts, there are variegated manifestations of living entities. Human beings, animals, horses, cows, dogs, cats. These are situated on the lower part of the branches, whereas on the upper part, there are higher forms of living entities, the demigods, Gandharvas, and many other higher species of life. Then he, Prabhupada tells us how the tree is nourished. The tree is nourished by the three modes of material nature. So the three modes of material nature nourish the tree and according to the different, the influence of the different modes, the tree will be nourished in different ways. So in this way, different species of life are manifested. Okay. Prabhupada explains also the tendency towards piety and impiety are considered to develop from these secondary roots which spread in all, all directions. So the secondary roots. The secondary roots are attachment and aversion which are byproducts of different varieties different varieties of suffering and sense enjoyment. So we have sub root secondary roots, and now then Prabhupada said the real root from Brahma Loka and the other roots are in the human planetary system. And after one enjoys the results of virtuous activities in the upper planetary system, he comes down to the earth and renews his karma. This planet of human beings is considered the field of activities. And yeah, this, this planet, uh, this is where we earn our karma and that karma will determine whether or not we go up or down or come back according to our karma, according to our acts which we're performing here on this earth planet we will suffer or enjoy in different places in the universe. Text 3 and 4 continue. This form of the tree cannot be perceived in this world. No one can understand where it ends, where it begins, and where its foundation is. Well, that's quite reasonable. When you see a bunyan tree, you don't know where is it, where it begins, because they're so huge and they have so many branches going into the ground, and the branches are as solid as the main trunk. You can't tell where it begins or where its foundation is. But then it mentions, with determination, with determination one must cut down this strongly rooted tree. Right? So it's mentioned, Asanga Shastrena, Tridena Chitva, Asanga Shastrena, Asanga. Ah, so Sangha is association. So Asanga knows detachment, get free. And Shastrena, the weapon. So with the weapon of detachment, Dridena Chitva, cutting, cutting it down. So detachment is like the, the axe to cut our way out of this bunyan tree. And we have to get detached. So, 
Then Krishna explains, one must seek that place from which having gone, one never returns, and there surrender to the Supreme Person. So Krishna introduces the concept of, Lord Krishna introduces to us, we have to go back to our real home in the spiritual world. In the purport, Prabhupada also comments, second paragraph, the word asanga is very important in this connection because the attachment for sense enjoyment and lording it over the material nature is very strong. Therefore, one must learn detachment by discussing, by discussion of spiritual science based on authoritative scriptures and one must hear from persons who are actively, who are actually in knowledge. So Srila Prabhupada describes to us the process of detachment, right? It's not artificial, we just simply have to hear very carefully from the right source, we have to hear the spiritual science and in this way cultivate detachment from the material world. And then Prabhupada continues, as a result of such discussion in the association of devotees, one comes to the Supreme Personality of Godhead. Then at the end of the purport, Srila Prabhupada says, therefore to get out of the entanglement of the strong banyan tree of material life, one must surrender to Krishna. As soon as one surrenders unto Krishna, one becomes detached automatically from the material extension. Then text 5 continues describing the process of surrender. As Prabhupada said, we have to surrender, we want to get out. So Lord Krishna continues, what do we need to do to surrender? The surrendering process is described in text number 5. When one is free from delusion caused by pride, he can begin the process of surrender. Hmm. So pride is the great enemy. Prabhupada says, pride is due to illusion. For although one becomes, so for although one comes here, stays for a brief time and then goes away, he has a foolish notion that he is the Lord of the world. He thus makes all things complicated and he's always in trouble. <laughs> so, this is the nature of the proud person. So we have to be on guard, we have to be very careful to get free of all pride. We have that tendency, material nature, we become proud of our little contribution, a little bit of service. So Prabhupada goes on in the purport, he said, these faulty associations bind one to this material world. After this stage, one has to develop spiritual knowledge. One has to cultivate knowledge of what is actually his own and what is actually not his own. And, and when one has an understanding of things as they are, he becomes free from all dual conceptions, such as happiness and distress, pleasure and pain. He becomes full in knowledge. Then it is possible for him to surrender to the Supreme Personality of Godhead. So introducing the concept of going back to Godhead, Lord Krishna continues, text 6, describing his abode how to get to that abode, or what, what that abode is like. He wants us to be attracted, he wants to tell us about it. Hearing about it, we should be attracted, we should want to go there. And he says, those who reach it never return to this material world. In the purport, second paragraph, first sentence, as long as a living entity is in this dark material world, he is in conditioned life. But as soon as he reaches the spiritual sky, by cutting through the false, perverted tree of this material world, he becomes liberated. 
So we want to come to the stage of liberation, we want to get out of this tree and, and then Prabhupada said how we have to be captivated by this. But he also says, one cannot become detached from the attraction of the material world simply by dressing himself in saffron cloth. <laughs> it's not just putting on saffron cloth. He must become attached to devotional service. So this is the idea. It's not just some make a show, I'm renounced. We have to genuinely become active in Krishna consciousness. Then text 7, an important verse describing the Lord's relationship with the living entities. And we're told how we're all eternal parts and parcels of the Lord, eternal parts, but due to conditioned life, we're struggling very hard with the six senses, including the mind. Why are we struggling? Would anyone like to say, why are we struggling with the six senses, including the mind? What's the problem? Hare Krishna Maharaj, because we want to be enjoyers. Yes. Can you think of a verse from Bhagavad Gita where Krishna describes this mistaken mentality? Well, it might be. I'm not thinking of that one. I was thinking that in the seventh chapter, Lord Krishna describes, yet there is another nature of mind, which are all living entities. Right? That we're thinking this world is for our exploitation. Because we're thinking that the, the, the inferior prakriti, the, the elements, the gross elements of material nature, we're thinking they're for us to enjoy. We're not understanding that the prakriti is Krishna's energy and we are also Krishna's energy. Although we're superior prakriti, we have consciousness, but still the material world is not meant just for our enjoyment. It's meant for us to use it in the service of Lord Krishna, right? But we have that tendency. And so that's why we're struggling. That's why uh, this verse is, you, we can see uh, mana shastani indriyani prakriti stani karshati. So prakriti stani karshati, we're struggling with the material nature because we're trying to exploit we're trying to enjoy what is not actually ours. All right. So uh, then, in the purport, Prabhupada explains uh, the secondary expansions, just like the the the, the secondary expansions of the Lord. They are all called the living entities. But the Vish Vishnu Tattva is a personal expansion, right? We're, we're just living entities. We're not expansion. We're not the, like the Vishnu Tattvas. We're on a different level. We're much below the, the Lord, the Vishnu Tattva forms of the Lord, his personal expansions. We're just the living entities, separated expansions. But we have a relationship with the Lord. We do have a relationship. And when we get liberated, when, if the time comes when we actually achieve liberation, 
Prabhupada describes that when we go back to Godhead, we actually get a body like the Lord. The bodies which are given to the liberated souls are bodies like the Supreme Lord. He lives in bodies featured like the Supreme Personality of Godhead. As far as bodily construction is concerned, there's no difference between the part and parcel living entities and the expansions of Vishnu Murti. So that's the goal, that's a, a great benefit of going back to Godhead. All right, and then next text, text number eight, we're going on to hear about reincarnation and Lord Krishna gives an, an analogy to help us to understand the process of transmigration or if you want reincarnation of the soul. Right, what is the analogy? Sorry? The analogy of the air. Yes, right. As the air carries the aroma, so the living entity carries his different conceptions from one body to another. Right? These conceptions are carried in the subtle body which accompanies the soul into the next life. Thus he takes one body after, after another. Prabhupada explains, minute independence is there. The change his body undergoes depends upon him. At the time of death, the consciousness he has created will carry him to the next type of body. So it's up to us. Where do we want to go? And then text 9 describes how you take a particular set of senses, particular ear, eye, tongue, nose. We see different creatures, they all have these different senses. Mm. Some, some creatures have very powerful vision, they can see very far away or they can see in the dark. And some have very strong ears, they can hear the slightest sound. Others have a very strong sense of smell. So Prabhupada explains here in the purport about consciousness, this is text number 9. On text number 9 Prabhupada is explaining about the consciousness. He says, consciousness is originally pure, like water. But if we mix water with a certain colour, it changes. Similarly, consciousness is pure, for the spirit soul is pure. But consciousness is changed according to the association of the material qualities. Real consciousness is Krishna consciousness. So Prabhupada explains briefly to us about consciousness. And then next text, Krishna goes on to describe how people cannot understand this. They cannot understand how we can quit one body and we have to take another body. But Lord Krishna does say, one whose eyes are trained, trained in knowledge, he can see all this. The ordinary materialistic people are blind, they cannot see this. So training is required. Prabhupada says in the purport, of text number 10, one who is trained to perceive all these things is very fortunate. Right? We say Krishna conscious souls, fortunate souls, very fortunate to be born in a, a family of devotees or to come to Krishna consciousness. Very fortunate soul. At the end of the purport, Srila Prabhupada comments, a person in such knowledge can understand how the conditioned living entity is suffering in this material existence. Therefore, those who are highly developed in Krishna consciousness try their best to give this knowledge to the people in general, for their conditional life is very much troublesome. Yeah, definitely. 
their conditional life is big trouble, so much trouble. So the devotees have compassion and they do their best to try to awaken them to understand this philosophy of Krishna consciousness, to bring them out of their ignorance. Text 11 continues talking about how people cannot see this, but Krishna says that the transcendentalist, he can see it all. Those whose minds are developed, they can understand, they can see what is taking place. Then text 12 goes on to describe about how Krishna is the maintainer, how Krishna is maintaining everything. Uh, in the purport, Prabhupada said, unintelligent cannot understand how things are taking place. Right, they couldn't understand how we're giving up one body and taking another body. There's many things they cannot understand. So we will ask you, how is Krishna maintaining us? Can we have some examples? Can you think of some ways in which Krishna is taking care of us and providing for us? Yes? Well, very vague. You don't tell me what he's given you. I'd like to know what he's given you. Uh, Hare Krishna. Like um, the sun, the moon, the air, water, we need air to breathe. Uh, we are not paying anything for that. And if the sun won't rise on time, then we will be in total darkness. Um, and the, you know, the trees won't grow. So the whole system will actually won't work and collapse. It's just these basic necessities are not there. Life won't be sustained. Okay. So, why, why, why is the moon so important? Because it gives uh, nourishment, uh, it, it gives the taste for the, you know, all these vegetables and crops. The, the cooling uh, light of the moon is very essential for the uh, vegetation to grow. Okay. We don't hear about this from other people. Does it mean that if we grow vegetables, if we grow them in a, inside a tent, for example, you know, in some parts, parts of the world, they have, you know, severe climate. So they, they have, they put up tents, uh, plastic sheeted tents, you know, and inside these tents, they will grow vegetables. So will these vegetables have the same juice or not? No, not, not the same as a natural one. So it's, it will be different. Hmm. Yeah. And that, having said that, that is possible only um, to some extent. That's not going to happen, you know, in the whole earth. Uh, how much can we do that artificial lighting and, you know, that kind of thing may not be possible in each and every sphere of life. But then uh, the sun and the moon is for everyone. All right. What about desalination water? We take water and take out the salt from it. We take water from the sea and just remove the salt. What do you think of that? Hey, I don't know. Did I mean, you mean like we drink the, that water? Yes. That water is used. Um, I'm not sure about that. 
Okay. Any other things devotees can think of? Yeah, Nila Madhuri Mataji. Hare Krishna, Madam. Um, regarding the free water, Prabhupada said in one of the room conversation, only pounds of water can be purified. If we take the sea water and purify and use it for drinking, only pounds of water. Naturally, it is, I mean, lots of water cannot be used for drinking. So, only the natural way that the, from the sea water, the clouds will be formed and clouds will give rain. So that rain water can be used. So everything is in the natural process which is being provided by Krishna. So if there's no rain, then we have no water to drink. Yes, Maharaj. You know, it has not rained here. I'm in Mayapur. It has not rained here for about maybe two or three months. The underground water, that also naturally it is being provided by Krishna himself. I think the underground water is all polluted and contaminated. Anyway, we have to we have to make arrangements. We have to store we have to store water. As you, if you say the rainwater is good, then when it rains, then we have to store the water and keep it, right, and use it until it rains again. Yes, All right, thank you for contributing. Anybody else? Maharaj, in this connection, can I say something? Yes, please. Uh, first, first of all, this, this verse is uh, teaching us our dependency on the mercy of the Lord. You know, Maharaj? Depending on the mercy of the Lord. Yes. Yes, all right. Definitely, we're dependent on him. He's, if he's maintaining us, we depend on him for mercy. <laughs> yes. But if, it, right. if we don't get any rain, does it mean he's not merciful to us? No, he is he's merciful, but uh, depending on our karma, of the collective karma, certain places they have a drought or... Uh-huh. So we can we can attract the mercy of the Lord. Yes, by surrendering to Him, we can attract His mercy. And in olden days, I've seen Maharaj when we were in our small little town in India. Um, every house had a tank under the house. So uh, during the monsoon period, they will collect the water, and that water is stored stored there, and it can be utilized during the summer and when there is no rain. All right. Yes. Yeah, we have to learn to be economical. Sometimes we're very wasteful. We have, you know, running water, water taps everywhere. We leave the water running. We're very wasteful, very extravagant. We don't appreciate everything which is given to us by the grace of Krishna. I remember one morning on a morning walk with Prabhupada, we walked past a house and there was a tap running, the water was running, nobody was there. Prabhupada turned to the devotee and said, go inside, turn that tap off. He, would, he, did, he didn't like to see the water wasted. So that's the nature of the pure devotee, they don't like to waste any of the resources of Lord Krishna. So use everything carefully. All right, in the purport, this text number 12, Prabhupada writes, uh, one should simply try to understand that the splendor of the sun, splendor of the moon, the splendor of electricity or fire are coming from the Supreme Personality of Godhead. In such a conception of life, the beginning of Krishna consciousness lies a great deal of advancement for the conditioned soul in this material world. So Prabhupada is explaining how we can awaken some God consciousness in uneducated, ignorant people. If they can simply appreciate these things which are given to us, which are not the work of any scientist, they're given to us by the, simply the grace of the Lord. And we should recognize how he's, how he's doing so much to help us. 
And of course he gives us the scriptures and he gives us so many other things. At the end of the purport, text number 12, without his mercy there cannot be sun. Without his mercy, there cannot be moon, and without his mercy, there cannot be fire, and without the help of the sun, moon, and fire, no one can live. These are some thoughts to provoke Krishna consciousness in the conditioned soul. All right? So, um, in the purport, Prabhupada talks about the fire of digestion, and then he says also, he set fire to start start the factories, so many things are done with the help of fire, sunrise, fire, moonlight, pleasing to the living entity. Huh? And then the vegetables are talked about. By the moonshine, all the vegetables are nourished. The moonshine is so pleasing that people can easily understand that they are living by the mercy of the Supreme Personality of Godhead. People are often not very appreciative. They don't recognize how much Krishna is giving for us. They don't see what they've got. They only see what we don't have. So then the next text goes on. Text number 13 talks about supplying the juice of life to the vegetables. And Krishna says, I become the moon and thereby supply the juice. And I enter into each planet by my energy, they stay in orbit. What's the example Prabhupada gives to describe about how the planets stay in orbit? There's an example given in the purport. Anybody? Yeah, Karuna Sindhu Maharaj, like pearls are strung together. What? That shloka, that pearls, pearls are strung together in one string. No, I, I'm asking what's the example Prabhupada gives? Prabhupada gives an, an analogy talking about how the planets are all in the hands of Krishna, are held by Krishna, keep, they're kept in orbit. The example? Is it not this one, Maharaj? That's the pearl is turned with the, together with the thread or something. Is not the one? I'm, I'm not hearing clearly what you say. Maharaj, pearl is turned together. What? Thread. What comes pearl together? Pearls, pearls. The string of the pearl. Oh, pearl. Oh, the pearls. No, that's not the example. I'm looking at the purport of text number 13. In the purport of text 13, Prabhupada talks about holding some dust in the hand, that he may pick up a handful of dust and hold it in the hand, right? But when he opens the hand, the dust will all fall to the ground. The dust, the dust won't just stay there, but Krishna keeps the planets in place. He said, if someone holds a handful of dust, the, the dust is going to fall. If one throws it in the air, it will fall down. In the same way, the planets are floating in the air, but they're not falling down. They're not falling down because they're all held in the fist of the universal form of the Supreme Lord. By His strength and energy, all moving and non-moving things stay in their place. And so you could say, well, this is the force of gravity. Yes, this is Krishna's power. It's, we see gravity as Krishna's power. The scientists say, no, it's just natural, just nature. But whose nature? It's the nature of Krishna. It's due to Krishna, Krishna's management, Krishna's supervision. In the purport, Prabhupada said, were it not for him, Lord Krishna, all the planets would scatter like dust in the air and perish. S similarly, it is due to the Supreme Personality of Godhead that the moon nourishes all vegetables. 
due to the moon's, moon's influence, vegetables become delicious. Without the moonshine, the vegetables can neither grow nor taste succulent. So these are some nice ways to understand the Lord. Oh, there's a few more. Text 14. The fire of digestion in the bodies of all living entities. And I join with the air of life, outgoing and incoming, to digest four kinds of foodstuffs. So without the Without the grace of the Lord, we cannot digest food. If you don't have good digestion, we have to pray to Krishna. <laughs> then we can, when you have a good digestion, then you can eat more food, you can enjoy, eat more, and you can eat heavy food, you can digest it all. So this is all by the arrangement of Krishna. Of course, as we get old, we don't have digestion anymore. So Krishna is warning us that you're old now, you have to prepare to give up the body. Don't eat so much in old age. Prabhupada said, young man cannot eat too much, but the old man cannot eat too little. And so Prabhupada, we saw Prabhupada, he was eating very frugally, very little, and he would always say like that. Okay, then text 15 comes up. Then, of course, it's a very famous verse, very well-known verse. We should, all, we should all be familiar with that. And we discussed that quite a bit yesterday when we had the preaching application, how the Lord is in the hearts of everyone. So he's in the heart of all living entities. He directs us. He remembers everything. We don't remember. And he allows us to forget also. Sometimes we want to forget, Krishna allows us to forget. We heard yesterday, so we can enjoy more when we forget. And when we want knowledge, then Krishna also gives us from the heart. Krishna will tell us, this is not good, or this is good, go there, do that, this is very good, or don't do that, this is no good. The super soul, the Lord in the heart is speaking to us. But often we don't want to hear, we don't like to take his direction. So therefore that's why we need also a spiritual teacher to direct us. The external form of the super soul is a spiritual teacher. At the end of the purport Prabhupada says, in this verse the purpose of the Vedas, the understanding of the Vedas, and the goal of the Vedas are clearly defined. All right, and then text 16, 17, and 18, we have the three sloki Gita, and we hear about two kinds of living entity. One is fallible, and one is infallible, and then above them all is the Supreme Lord. And then text 19 describes the process of devotion that we should engage in devotional service without doubting. And then text 20, the conclusion, the goal of devotional service. Whoever understands this will become wise and his endeavor will know perfection. All right, any questions at all on this chapter? At the end of the purport, just to conclude this chapter 15, the final paragraph of the last verse of chapter 15, Prabhupada writes, While one is performing devotional service in the association of pure devotees in Krishna consciousness, there are certain things which require to be vanquished altogether. The most important thing one has to surmount is weakness of the heart. The first fall down is caused by the desire to lord it over material nature. Thus one gives up the transcendental loving service of the Lord. The second weakness of the heart is that one increases the propensity to lord it over material nature. 
he becomes attached to matter and the possession of matter. The problems of material existence are due to these weaknesses of the heart. In this chapter, the first five verses describe the process of freeing oneself from these weaknesses of heart, and the rest of the chapter, from the sixth verse through the end, discuss Purushottam Yoga. All right, I'd like to go on to chapter 16, Divine and Demoniac Nature. Maharaj, you want to take some questions? Yes. Yeah, Hare Krishna Maharaj. Uh, so Maharaj, how are the first five verses speaking of the, uh, speak how to get rid of the weakness of the heart? Well, we were explaining that the banyan tree, that Ashwata, that Ashwata tree, the banyan tree is teaching us the importance of detachment, that we have to get out, right? That banyan tree represents our entanglement in the material existence. And this entanglement in the material existence is due to our attachment, due to our weakness of heart. Okay. And uh, in the same context, Maharaj, as I understood that the, the reflection of the banyan tree, which is actually the spiritual tree, is based on the desire. And uh, we are seeing the reflected of the tree. We are not seeing the spiritual one. So, uh, it is mentioned here that one has to cut the tree by the weapon of detachment. So I was just trying to understand uh, what is the meaning of cutting the tree. One has to come out of it and one has to go to the spiritual tree. Is that correct? Yes. I have to get free from the attachment, from the entanglement and the material energy. And the process for that is... Uh, so one has to rem get removed of his ignorance and uh, one has to purify his desire as the reflection is based on the desire, so one has to uh, purify his desires. Yes, we spoke about Asanga Shastrena, the weapon of detachment, and the, the Prabhupada, I quoted, I read to you from the purport, Srila Prabhupada said, we cultivate this detachment by hearing from scriptures, from proper authorized persons. Uh, they explain to us uh, the message of the scriptures, and this will allow us to cultivate detachment from the material existence. Okay. And Maharaj, in the purport of the fifth verse, it is uh, very elaborately mentioned about the lording over tendency which we have. Uh, uh, one should try to cultivate real knowledge that's not, that he's not the lord of the material nature. Now, uh, how does one uh, come out of that lording over tendency? Because uh, uh, when we hear such, some lectures and we, uh, when we try, uh, try to associate with devotees, we feel this, yes, we are not the lords, but then uh, this tendency come, keeps on coming back and back and back. Yes, so you have to hear more and more. You have to hear more and more until it really begins to penetrate. Because if if it keeps coming back, it means you didn't hear very well. So we have to hear more and more. It has to become part of our existence. Our whole consciousness and mindset has to change by hearing. And so it requires more hearing. We may, just like when you have a very bad disease, you have to take a treatment for some time. It's not just hearing once. You have to hear, you have to go regularly and regularly get treatment. So the same way we have to hear this message, we have to awaken the spiritual knowledge. And by, we have to hear, the knowledge has to be transmitted from the spiritual authorities into our heart. Not just into our ears, it has to go to the heart. We have to clean the heart. So, it will take some time. And we have to do service as well. We have to engage. It's not just only understanding. When, we're, when we actually understand, then we will take up active service. So, surrender means positive engagement in the service of Krishna. 
You take up activities in relation to the service of Krishna. We don't just simply hear and think, oh, very nice, and go away and go back into Maya. But we have to take up the activities. Right? Just like you come in here and then you, you've heard, you're convinced you will share it with others, you will teach this knowledge to others, you pass it on, you'll communicate this information to other people, you won't just keep it for yourself. Right? If you have something, you've really appreciated it, you want to share it with others. Thank you. Maharaj, we have next Hindu Lekha Madhavi. Yes. Uh, Hare Krishna, Madam. My question is from the fifth verse. Given that one has to cultivate knowledge of what is actually his own and what is actually not his own. What is the meaning of this, Maharaj? Because what is there our own, Maharaj? We don't have, we own nothing, really. Well, certain things are given to us for the service of Krishna. Krishna gives you certain, Krishna may give you proprietorship of something. He's giving it to you with the, so that you can use it in his service. You have to take care of it. Just like we have... Like body? Huh? Like body. Well, like body. the body, of course. But so, and many other things also. You may have a family, you may have a home, you may have money. Your duty is to use it for Krishna. What, what is that noise in the background? I think it's in the Lekhamataji's background. No, 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 Maharaj, because I don't have anything. Somebody is, let me check, someone is, or you are Next, Maharaj, we have Murli Govind Govind. Yes. Hare Krishna Maharaj, please accept my humble obeisances. Maharaj, we normally see in some places, Whenever there is a drought or <coughs> there are no rains, uh, some priests perform these sacrifices for uh, pleasing the Lord Varun and get the rains. How do we understand and how do we explain to the normal people, Prabhu Maharaj? They, they do a sacrifice and get rain? Yeah, yeah. What kind of sacrifice they do? They do very Sacrifices, Maharaj. Brahmanas. Ah, yeah, Brahmanas. Well, we also, you know, there was a drought one time in Andhra Pradesh, and the 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 the, the man in charge of the the drought commission had written to Prabhupada requesting financial support to help feed the animals, and Prabhupada said, well, "Look, well, look, I'm coming there, and we will do." A yagya, we will do the Sankirtan yagya. So Prabhupada came there with the devotees and they had a big Sankirtan and the next day it rained. And so the, pe the people were very appreciative. This, this is described in the Science of Self-Realization. If you read the Science of Self-Realization, the letter there from the man and Prabhupada's reply and then the description of what happened. So the real yagya, the real sacrifice is the Harinam Sankirtan. That's the real yagya for the age, the chanting of the holy names. Okay, thank you, Maharaj. Thank you very much. Maharaj, we had a practical example here in Brisbane. A uh, few years back, we had a drought and there was no water, and they were going to say that they were going to recycle the water which we were using. And devotees all, they were all worried that, oh, we'll have to take about that deities with the recycled water and all. So what we did is we did Harinam Sankirtan. We went in each and every places we went there. And after a few months, there was so much of rain, it flooded actually. After a few months? Yeah, after, I mean, few days, not even month actually. Oh, okay, very good, yes, certainly. If we do Yagya, we do Sankirtan, we can expect rain. All right, can we go on now?
Krishna Keshava? It's not there? Hare Krishna? He is there, but I think Maharaj... All right, so we'll go ahead. I think there's no more questions. We'll go ahead to chapter six, 16. So, Sorry Maharaj, my audio cut out for a minute. Oh, okay. So, <laughs> I'm, I'm going to go on now to chapter 16. I think there's no okay. more questions. Okay. Right? Oh, let me see. So, looking at this section, chapter 16, we can see there are... Oh, There are one, two, three, four sections, is it? Three, three sections, chapter 16, three sections. First of all, transcendental and demoniac qualities will be described, then the demoniac nature, and then the results of demoniac activities, and the choice of elevation or degradation. The relationship with the previous chapter described, chapter 15 describes the banyan tree of the material world, right? In chapter 14 we heard about the modes of, the mode of goodness and how we should try to cultivate the mode of goodness and how it's not good to be in the mode of passion and ignorance. So how did that relate to chapter 15? In chapter 15 we told about the living entities higher up in the tree, right? The higher forms of life, like the demigods, they're like sim similar to the mode of goodness. And the living entities in the lower parts of the tree, you have the human beings, you have the animals and like that, lower forms of life. So we're all passion and ignorance. Now chapter 16 is coming. and. We have the divine and the demoniac qualities. So the divine qualities are the mode of goodness and the demoniac qualities, they are the mode of passion and ignorance. So you can see the connection, 14, 15, 16. We have the mode of goodness being stressed and that the, we're being warned to try to get out of the mode of passion and ignorance. So Krishna is going to explain First of all, the demoniac qualities and the mentality which drives one down to the lower regions, to hell. We'll hear about the divine, the demonic qualities and the divine. Huh? Let's see. So text number one. Fearlessness, purification of one's existence, cultivation of spiritual knowledge, charity, self-control, performance of sacrifice, study of the Vedas, austerity, simplicity, non-violence, truthfulness, freedom from anger, renunciation, tranquility, aversion to fault-finding, compassion for all living entities, freedom from covetousness, gentleness, modesty, steady determination, vigor, forgiveness, fortitude, cleanliness, and freedom from envy are from, and, and from the passion for honor. These transcendental qualities, O son of Bharat, belong to godly man endowed with divine nature. All right, so this is the beginning of the, the chapter we're hearing. I think there's 26 qualities, divine qualities mentioned here. We'll read Prabhupada's purport. In the beginning of the 15th chapter, the banyan tree of this material world was explained. The extra roots coming out of it were compared to the activities of the living entities, some auspicious, some inauspicious. In the ninth chapter also, the devas are godly, and the asuras, the ungodly, or demons were explained. Now, according to Vedic rites, activities in the mode of goodness are considered auspicious for progress on the path of liberation. 
And such activities are known as daivi prakriti, transcendental by nature. Those who are situated in the transcendental nature make progress on the path of liberation. For those who are actually in the mode of passion and ignorance, on the other hand, there is no possibility of liberation. Either they will have to remain in this material world as human beings, or they will descend among the species of animals, or even lower life forms. In this 16th chapter, the Lord explains both the transcendental nature and its attendant qualities, and the demoniac nature and its qualities. He also explains the advantages and disadvantages of these qualities. We're going to look at these different qualities, and we want to understand them. If you, if you have your student handbook with you, uh, there's a table with the different qualities. It's on page 76. On page 76, the divine qualities. Now, we should note these different qualities are, it's not that each and every quality is for everyone, but it depends on the particular position of the devotee. Just like, for example, the first quality uh, mentioned here, fearlessness. Fearlessness. Now, fearlessness is not a quality which we would want women to cultivate so much, or even ordinary family men. But this is actually the, what's really meant for sannyasis. And Srila Prabhupada explains, sannyasi means they should be fearless. They should be willing to go, to go anywhere and just depend on Lord Krishna. Just like Srila Prabhupada could go to America with how much money? How much money did Prabhupada take to America when he went there? You know, he had like 30 rupees or 50 rupees or something. And then he sold... He sold some Bhagavatam to the captain of the ship, the captain Pandya on the ship, Jaladuta. He gave him twenty dollars. That was all the money he had. And Prabhupada said, twenty dollars is just a few hours spending money in America. Even in 1966 or 60, 66 when Prabhupada arrived, it wasn't a lot of money. Twenty dollars wouldn't pay a taxi fare nowadays. So uh, Prabhupada just had this money. It, how he was just depending on Krishna. So that is the mood fearlessness. The devotee is not worried about his main, main, maintenance, and he's not thinking, "Well, where will I get my prasadam, or where will I sleep? Oh, I need a nice room. Oh, I need the no." That's not the mood of the sannyasi. The mood of sannyasi is just to depend on Lord Krishna, to go everywhere, preaching. So this is a quality, fearlessness is meant for sannyasis. But then the next quality, purification of one's existence. That can be applied to everyone. Everyone should want to purify their existence. But of course, especially sannyasis, strictly following the rules and regulations, that's, that's what sannyasis are meant to do. They're meant to show that example. They're very strict in their standards. Wake up early, go to the morning program, see the deities like that, take part in all the activities. This is the business of sannyasis. Cultivation of knowledge, number three, cultivation of knowledge. Again, sannyasis, it's meant, brahmacharis also, brahmacharis meant to get good education, then they can go and preach with the sannyasis. Then charity, number four says charity, and, 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 and they put, this is meant for householders, krihastas. 
Grihastha should be charitable. Now charitable is not just giving money. Don't think that, well, look, I'm poor, you know, I don't have any money, I'm poor. But charitable means you can share whatever you have with others. Just like, you know, you eat, you cook some food. So Prabhupada said, householders, they should invite guests to come. They should bring guests to their home to eat. So that is charity. Food is ready in my home, anybody is hungry, come and eat. Householders are supposed to invite like that. Whatever they have, they will share. They have, a, they have a home, they will share their home with others. They invite people to come. They don't just try to be private, don't come here, don't disturb me, this is my... That's not charitable. And so charitable is not just giving money to people. And sadhus generally, they, they don't want money. They, 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 try, they get, want to get away from money. They want to, but they do want to, the opportunity to preach. So you bring a sadhu to your home, they will preach to you, they will enlighten you. Any comments about these things so far? Any discussion? No? Okay. We'll go ahead. Number five. Self-control, and this is especially meant for grihastas, of course. Prabhupada would say, uh, family, uh, householder life means it's like going to a feast and fasting. Why? Because there's always an opportunity for sense gratification in family life. You know, you're living on your own, you have your home, and. You can eat all kinds of food, you can eat whatever you like. So you have to be very careful. You can wake up any time you like, you can be late, you can do all kinds of things. So very important to control the senses. Family life, Grihastha Ashram doesn't mean you can be uncontrolled. You have to be very controlled. Number six, sacrifice. Oh, this is again meant for everyone, especially grihastas. Not to perform sacrifices, the easy, easiest one to do is to do Harinam Sankirtan. Just, there's, and that's what we should be doing every day. Every day you need, you need to get some kirtan, Sankirtan, so important, the life of the devotees, gives one a taste of the full nectar for which we are always anxious. Every day you need to get kirtan. So in the lockdown, if you're not able to go to temple, you need to do kirtan at home. It's very good. And if you're not doing kirtan at home, then you need to log in, use your computers and your mobile phones to go online and listen to other people doing kirtan and join in the kirtan with them. It's very nice. Sometimes, you know, when I go to China, uh, we will play a video of the devotees doing kirtan. Yeah, and it's very nice. We play the video and we see the devotees there and they're chanting and we're just watching a video but we also chant and I get the devotees also to dance and in this way we're just watching a video, we're not really having kirtan, we're just playing a movie but it's kirtan and this, we're having very nice kirtan, chanting and dancing, just watching, not just sitting and watching but actually participating in the kirtan, we're chanting and dancing in the home. So this is the yagya for this age, that's the real yagya. Of course, grihastas like to do other yagyas, you, you have a new home, you do a griha pravesh, you have a baby, you do anaprashna, well, these are all different yagyas. Okay, you can do those yagyas too, but the real yagya is sankirtan, right? Number seven, Vedic study. This is meant especially for the brahmacharis. Student life, they should spend their time studying scriptures. So the young men, young women also, good for them. Study and learn. If they learn well, well when they are young, when they grow up, they will not forget. 
They can learn so many things. Young age. One time Prabhupada was coming to America and re the reporter asked him, he said, all of your followers seem very young, Swamiji. And Prabhupada said, yes. He said, because there is a time for education. So he said, our movement is for education purposes. Very important. Young people, they need to get this education. They need to have regular uh, classes. They need to hear more. They need to take part in these studies. You know, even young, young people can take part. They can do this Bhakti Shastri. It's not necessary that you, that you have to be a certain age. Many people, can, young people, they can also come and take part. If they're literate, if they're able to write, they can also come and do the course. Number eight, austerity for everyone, especially vanaprastas. Of course, sannyasis also, but everyone can do some austerity. Human life is meant for tapasya. That's Lord Rishabdev's teaching, austerity. Austerity in the sense that, you know, simple living, controlling the mind and senses. Don't be a sense gratifier, live in luxury, live in uh, so much uh, opulence, but try to live simply, keep it simple, basic. Don't be extravagant especially vanaprastas, they're still in family life, but they're deta cultivating detachment. So austerity is purifying. And in the, later on when we do chapter 16 and 17, we'll hear about austerity in the mode of goodness how we can purify ourselves by austerity through hearing the scriptures and through reciting prayers, d many different ways in which we can practice austerity of the body, the mind and words, worshipping the, the spiritual teachers, that's also an austerity of the body and uh, speaking the truth and making it also palatable. This is all different kinds of austerity. We'll hear about this in the, in the Bhagavad Gita. We still have to do that. Number nine, simplicity. For everyone, simple and straightforward. Don't be political. Don't try to hide the truth. Number ten, nonviolent. For everyone, Nonviolence means, of course, we mentioned before, not disturb, not not doing any, not speaking any unkind words to others. Speaking words which are tr pleasing and truthful. Number eleven, truthfulness. That is one of the pillars of religion. Satyam, that we should be truthful. The, and it said only a portion of the lag of truthfulness is remaining in the Kali Yuga. So we should speak the truth. We're not meant to tell a lot of lies. Sometimes you may have to lie. Just like we see in the Mahabharata, Krishna wanted Maharaj Yudhisthira to lie. Tell Drona Ashwatthama is dead. Maharaj Yudhisthira didn't want to do it. So he, he was attached to truthfulness. Generally, the devotee doesn't like to tell lies. But some special case, Krishna wants, we have to do it. Number 12, freedom from anger, everyone. It's one of the gates to hell. Number 13, renunciation for everyone. Not just sannyasis. Everyone should be renounced. Renunciation means using everything in Krishna's service. Right? Rupa Goswami taught us yukta vairagya. 
renunciation nirbanda krishna sambande yukta vairagya ujjate that actual renunciation is to use everything in the service of krishna then tranquility for everyone we should be unaffected by disturbing emotions be peaceful be equipoised these things are mentioned then number 15 aversion to fault finding this is one of the anarthas dirty things in the heart we don't want to we don't want to make a habit of finding faults with people we want to see our own faults don't see faults in others see good in others and see faults in ourselves don't make a habit of finding fault it makes so much trouble so many problems come from this number 16 compassion for all living entities again all for these are for everyone compassion how to show compassion for living entities we like to give prasada that's very good we can also give the holy name chanting of the holy name is a very good way to show compassion on everyone let them hear the the chanting of the holy name and if there's an opportunity we can also give spiritual knowledge number 17 freedom of covetousness being too greedy It's not good. One of the gates to hell is greed. So try to avoid that. Wanting to get more and more, collecting all the time more. Then gentleness. Gentleness, being kind to everyone. Not being harsh in our dealings, but making friends. It's important for us when we go out for preaching. that we can make friends with people sometimes you just make enemies just everywhere you go just quarrel and argue with people number 19 modesty so modesty like humility pridelessness being humble modesty not proud that's the point one is very modest he won't want to take credit for anything he doesn't want to get recognition he just wants to be engaged in krishna's service number 20 steady determination another important quality right nectar of instruction one should be determined utsahan nischaya daryat enthusiasm patience and determination so determination we have to be very determined we we are going to succeed in krishna consciousness we really have to have that determination then number 21 vigor well let's and this quality is mentioned meant particularly for the kshatriya the managerial type the administrator they have to be vig they have to have vigor because they have to be able to give protection they should be able to look after others people may come to them for shelter they should be willing to give that shelter number 22 forgiveness especially shatriyas but everyone we should be willing to forgive people for offenses for minor offenses forgiveness this difficult thing sometimes people sometimes you, they say something to you something very nasty it's hard to forget hard to forgive them people, you know the, the nature of this material world can be very harsh sometimes we're very expert in giving pain to others we don't realize the things we say sometimes are very painful number 23 fortitude again all especially kshatriyas fortitude describes mental and emotional strength when facing difficult situations 
So when we're in difficulties, we have to be strong, we have to keep the mind controlled. Cleanliness, all, especially Vaishyas. But everyone should give attention to cleanliness is next to godliness. That's a common saying, Prabhupada quoted it. So it's very important to keep clean internally and externally. Number 25, freedom from envy, not essential. Oh, not resentful of another, <laughs> sorry. Fearful, freedom from envy, one is not resentful of others, it's for everyone. And finally, freedom from the passion for honour, all, especially sudras. We should respect others. So, I'd like a little, give you a little exercise, what you can do. Pick a quality, one of these 26 qualities, pick one quality and then tell me, how are you going to cultivate this quality? What are you going to do? What activity can you do which will help you to cultivate this quality? Do you understand what you have to do? I'd like each of you to do it individually. Pick one of these 26 qualities, try to pick a different one from the person, if you're sitting with somebody else, do it different, you know. But pick one quality from these 26 and just tell me, how are you going to go about cultivating this quality? What are you going to do? You know, for example, if, if we were to pick uh, cultivation of knowledge, okay, and maybe I'm going to take Bhakti Shastri course, or I'm going to go to Bhakti Bhai Bhav, something like that. So just give you a few minutes to think about this and you can all write down something and I'll, I want to come, and I'll come back to you, I want to hear from you. All right, I don't think you need a lot of time to do this. I'd like to take some feedback, can we hear from each devotee? Yeah, Harishwari Maharaj. Hare Krishna Maharaj. Maharaj, I would like to cultivate forgiveness. So, uh, practical ways, uh, what I thought of this, uh, by always remembering that uh, everything and everyone is part and parcel of Krishna. And all, the second thing is remembering, try to remember that everyone is uh, behaving in a certain uh, 
manner because of the modes of nature. So it's like not willingly they are doing, but because they are uh, forced to do until certain modes of nature. And also by reciting the shloka, the form compound. So I think in that case, I should be able to continue. Oh, I think you picked a very interesting quality, yeah, the quality of forgiveness, a very, very challenging one actually, to try to cultivate this forgiveness, because we do have that nature that we want to, you know, if somebody wrongs us or something bad happens to us and we have a, we feel somebody was responsible, we may have some hate for them and, and so it's very very, very difficult actually to cultivate this forgiveness. But you've come up with some strategy for it. Very nice, very interesting. You can say recite Tattenu Kampong and we can try to remember Krishna conscious philosophy, thinking about well, whatever happens, you know, maybe we deserved it, right? Yes, ma'am. One time, one time Prabhupada was giving a lecture and a man was listening to the lecture, at one point in the lecture he stood up and he began to shout abuses at Srila Prabhupada. And he shouted a lot of abuse and then he stormed out. And Prabhupada said, oh I must have offended him in my previous life. So when somebody, somebody does something to us, they do something wrong to us, we could also think like that that maybe I've offended this person in my previous life. Sometimes it's a tendency that somebody does something to us, we want to get revenge. And that's very dangerous, very, very bad thing. But we have to cultivate, as you say, forgiveness or even tolerance in the face of the adversity. Okay, thank you, Maharaji. Next, yeah. Next we have Sachinandan. Yes. Hare Krishna Maharaj. Uh, and I was considering that uh, quality of self-control, especially me in Gras Ashram, you rightly said that it is like having a fast, having, controlling oneself and have peace. That was a very nice analogy. So uh, I was uh, to uh, cultivate it. I was considering a few things and uh, to practice strictly. One is at fixing my time to go to bed and uh, to get up in the morning, and uh, I mean try to regulate it and fix that at least. And then I'm fixing my meal and prasadam habits, the timings and uh, quantity both. Okay. Very good. Then fixing my sadhana timings, timings to do chanting, maybe time, timings to do reading or hearing. Uh -huh. So regulation. Yeah. Uh -huh. okay. that's, what, that's what I could think of. Okay, thank you very much. Next, Maharaj is Hindu Lekha Kripa Devi Maharaj. Hare Krishna Maharaj, I would like to cultivate the steady determination because uh, in my service, I'm finding so much of uh, difficulties and uh, so much of challenges. So those things I would like to not give up and continue with my service with determination. <laughs> okay. Yes, determination. Yeah, we need that determination. We have to be very determined. Yeah. Mm. Because many times I thought that I'll quit and go, but uh, still with the... Uh, lot of resilience, I am staying still back in that service without relenting in spite of so much of difficulty. I would like to continue with that and uh, be, uh, do my service. Okay, very good. So we hope you'll be successful. Yeah. Next is Chidanandan Mahipur. So I also wanted to talk about imbibing the quality of uh, uh, steady determination. Uh, so apart from that, also I am really I like the idea of being a stithadhir. I mean, being equipoised in 
any situation come what may so these are some of the qualities i really like to imbibe and uh, for the study determination um, we are making maybe some plans like a proper schedule or something like that so that because uh, we have a long way to go in krishna consciousness and i somehow i want my sadhana my my head that lifestyle to be very steady and i should continue step by step in a very determined fashion so um maybe you can give me some tips <laughs> on how i could i could be a uh, very steadily determined and also be uh you know equipoised in any situation mm. <laughs> well a lot d depends on association you have to be in the right place with the right people then it certainly can make it a lot easier for you to be determined. If they're also like-minded, if they're also similar, then it's very helpful. Yes, Maharaj. Depends, fine. depends mm -hmm. a lot on your personal situation. What are you doing? Who are you with? All day like that will affect how we act and but as much as we can determination well we have to make a commitment make commitments and sometimes even make vows even like that you know just like when we become devotees when we take initiation we make a vow you know to do these things we we have to try to keep these vows we want we want to become very uh very fixed in these things, that I made this promise, I have to do it. I have to stick with it. So sometimes like that you have to renew your vow, renew your commitment. And sometimes, as you say, keeping, you could keep sadhana charts and checking, uh, have a monitor, have somebody who's a monitor who understands your nature and who knows what your weaknesses and your challenges and then they can check on you. You need to put yourself under some kind of authority who can really watch over you and check you. Right. That can also help you to be more determined. If you know you have to be responsible to someone, <laughs> then you become more cautious, more serious. Yes, Maharaj. Right. Okay. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you, Prabhu. Maharaj, we have Yes. Krishna Maharaj, Jagrat Pranam. Uh, a few years back, I was I was writing a devotee's quality journal and uh, it helped me with five qualities which are given out of these 26 qualities. What I used to do was, I write uh, qualities of my 15 companion devotees, one quality a day. And in correspondence to that, I, were, I was also writing the application of uh, that particular quality which I can apply in my life and I used to contemplate on, on that particular quality for a day. So it helped me with uh, five qualities, aversion to fault finding, that is 15, gentleness, modesty, forgiveness and freedom from envy. So this is how I was helped before and I maybe incorporate that plan in my life in few days. Okay, Prabhu. Very nice. So every day you have a different quality for five days, is it? Uh, no, for 15 devotees, I have chosen 15 companion devotees. Uh -huh. And uh, I used to write one quality a day for each day. Uh, just one quality of any devotee for one day. One quality for each devotee? Uh, not for each devotee, Maharaj. Just, uh, it was like a roster. So after 15 days, another devotee comes. It's the same devotee oh. Just one quality of any devotee. And, and work on it for 15 days? Uh, no Maharaj, uh, like I used to write a quality of a devotee for one day and used to contemplate on that thing and uh, used to make my mind to uh, how I can practically apply that thing at least for one day. Oh, for one day, uh-huh. Okay. <laughs> and it helped you, huh? Yeah, at that time it helped us. <laughs> then, I, then I forgot about it and 
I can again start that. Okay. Okay, uh, I just want to read a little bit to you from the purport here, the end of that purport for text 1 and 3, 1 to 3, the final paragraph, Prabhupada talks, he said, all these 26 qualifications mentioned are transcendental qualities. They should be cultivated according to the different statuses, statuses of social and occupational order. The purport is that even though material qualities or material conditions are miserable, if these qualities are developed by practice by all classes of men, then gradually it is possible to rise to the highest platform of transcendental realization. Okay, and Prabhupada also picks up on the, the, the term which is given here in the, at the end of the text number three, Abhijatasya, that it refers to one born of transcendental qualities or godly quality, godly tendencies. So if you're born with these qualities, then it's so much easier. You know, if one is fortunate, you have a good birth, you're born in a devotee family, then it can be so much nicer. You can see from birth the children born in a devotee family, how by nature, you know, they just seem to have so much uh, purity and it's so, everything is just so natural for them because their previous life, because they, they were blessed to bo be born in a, a devotee family. And so Prabhupada talks about begetting children in a godly atmosphere. This is the Garbhadhan Samskar, very important to get good children in Krishna consciousness. So it's really, really important that our children become devotees. If our children don't become devotees, then who are going to be the devotees in the future? You know, we build all these temples, we're opening temples, no, hardly anybody living in the temple, nobody often living in the temple these days. Of course, we have congregation devotees, but we want, we hope we can keep devotees. We, we want the children to grow up to be devotees. It's very, very important. So, we want to have quality children. And to get quality children, you have to do some scars. Jaipitaka Maharaj would always tell his disciples about that. I hope you're doing some scars. We want quality children. And then you get these divine qualities by birth. And if you don't get them, then what happens? Text number four describes what happens when we don't do the some scars. Text number four pride, arrogance, conceit, anger, harshness, and ignorance. These qualities belong to those of demoniac nature, O son of Prita. So we were talking about pride in the previous chapter. So here it's, it's there also, not only pride, arrogance, conceit, anger, harshness, ignorance. Not, they're not pleasant things. These things are very unpleasant. And this is the demoniac nature. Now, I remember one devotee always used to say, there's only two natures. There's only the divine and the demoniac nature. If we're not divine, then we're demoniac. If we don't have the godly qualities, then we, are, we, we show the demoniac qualities. There's nothing in between. Someone, someone was very disturbed when they heard that. They said, oh, no, no, there must be something in between. I may not be divine, I may not be godly, but I'm not demoniac. There must be something in between. <laughs> but Krishna doesn't say anything about anything in between. Either there's the divine nature or the demoniac nature. Nothing in between. So we want to really be aware and guard against this, uh, these, all these demoniac qualities which Prabhupada says, the royal road to hell is being described. 
Text number five. These transcendental qualities are conducive to liberation, whereas the demoniac qualities make for bondage. But Krishna says to Arjuna, don't worry Arjuna, you are born with the divine qualities. Arjuna was hearing about the de demoniac qualities, he would be worried <laughs> that maybe I'm a demon because I'm going to fight, I'm going to kill all these people, so I'm a, I must be demoniac. But Krishna tells him, no, no, you're born with the, the good qualities. And Prabhupada explains that although Arjuna is a Kshatriya, that is fighting and should, that his arrows are, are transcendental, his service is transcendental, shooting arrows into the body, it's, he's not a demon. There is no cause for Arjuna to lament. Anyone who performs the regulative principles of the different orders of life is transcendentally situated. So for Arjuna, it was the regulative principle to fight, to take part in the battle. So there was no fault on Arjuna's part. So Krishna is just telling, he's encouraging him by telling him like this, that don't worry Arjuna, you're a good, you're a good person, you're okay. Text number six, in this world there are two kinds of created beings, right? Only two. Divine or demoniac? I have already explained to you at length the divine. Now hear from me of the demoniac. So very nice section actually. Prabhupada lectured on this section. You can see some Prabhupada's lectures. Text number seven, very nice one. Pravritim cha, navritim cha. Right? Those who are demoniac. They do not know what is to be done and what is not to be done. And Prabhupada, in one lecture, he said, uh, we, are we are educating the devotees, we are educating people in Krishna consciousness to change the quality of the pavriti and nivriti. Before becoming devotees, we had all the bad qualities. And we were thinking, this is good. We were thinking, you know, drugs and sex and alcohol and meat eating and everything, all sinful life. We're thinking, this is very good. And we were thinking, oh, saintly qualities, is that these are all bad. These are all, all these people, they're so, they're, they're so straight, you know. <laughs> they don't do any bad thing. And we would joke about them. So before becoming devotees, we thought like that, but then after becoming a devotee, then we, we change. So the quality of the pavriti and the nivriti, what, what we do and what we don't do, it changes. That after becoming devotees, people offer, offer us alcohol and we say, no, no, I don't smoke, I don't drink, I don't take these things, I don't even drink tea, I don't even drink coffee. Right? So the quality changes by Krishna consciousness. So before becoming devotee we had the demoniac qualities, but by becoming devotee we ch the quality of this pavriti and nivriti is changed. But for the demon, for those who are not devotees, neither cleanliness nor proper behavior nor truth is found in them. Nasochyam napisacharo nasatyam teshu vidyate. So sochyam cleanliness and then uh, achara behavior and satyam truth. These things are not found in those who are demon. So the Prabhupada gives an extensive purport on, on this verse because it's very good verse, very powerful verse for preaching to people about the demonic mentality here. Uh, Prabhupada explains there, the demons do not know the scriptural rules, nor do they have any inclination to follow them. 
This is another big difference between the divine and the demoniac qualities. The demons, they don't care for the scriptures. But the devotees, they are guided by the scriptures. So this, this is the pavriti and nevriti. It's like, like that verse in Bhagavad Gita, they talk about what is day for all beings is night for the introspective sage. Oh, different. We see things in a very different way. Demons are not clean, either internally or externally. And Prabhupada talks about the importance of keeping clean, cleaning the teeth, shaving, changing clothes. So important. And then Manusamita, Prabhupada brings up the Manusamita, different rules and regulations which are there for guiding people about how women should be taken care of. And Prabhupada talks about women should not be given freedom. But however, Prabhupada said, that does not mean that women are to be kept as slaves. But they are like children. Children are not given freedom, but that does not mean they are kept as slaves. The demons have now neglected such injunctions, and they think that women should be given as much freedom as men. However, this has not improved the social order of the world. Actually, a woman should be given protection at every stage of life. And so Prabhupada talks about this, of course, this is very controversial. Maybe some of the ladies who are here today are not happy to hear this. But usually, the point is, women like to be protected. That's the important thing. And one thing which doesn't help the protection of women is when they have to go out to work. When they're going, they go out to work, they have a career, they work in the big office, they're surrounded by men, they work with a lot of men. It's not a very healthy situation for the chastity of a woman to be in that kind of situation, working with a lot of men all day, and come home at night, tired, and irritable. <laughs> and so, these are problems. In Kali Yuga, nowadays, women all work practically. Even I see in India, a lot of women also working. But it's, it's not actually the best thing. Women should be able to take care of their children. All right. Uh, maybe we could stop here and ask if there's any questions. Yes? freedom, but they were not treated properly. This is the reason that uh, they, are, they are trying to achieve freedom. Women want freedom because they were obviously mistreated. So what is the correct understanding of this that they should be given free, uh, should not be given freedom and they should not be slaves also? Yes, right. They should be protected. What, the, what is the correct understanding of it? Well, the correct understanding is that they have to be properly looked after and properly cared for. They should be given protection and their needs taken care of. But nowadays the modern women, when like uh, you uh, give them the concept of being a housewife, they rather repel it because they do not like that concept. They want uh, 
some liberations, there will be equal laws uh, for them. And they want, they want the, the freedom because they feel like suffocated at home. This is the useful conception of modern women. So, well, not, uh, well, not all women want that. A lot of women are quite happy to be at home after they go to work for a while. Yes, after they've been yes. going to work for a while, they're quite happy to stay at home. Yes, yes, the, the concept does change after uh, getting married and if they are satisfied with the family, the conception does change a bit. It also happens with few months again, I've seen that. But uh, generally, the mass mass of the women, if we see, they, they want they want to be working. That's what we have seen in the modern, especially in this, uh, I mean, what do you say, developed cities or something like Delhi, you know, that this culture is coming up very fast. So what is the correct understanding and how to explain this to such mothers? Well, like I say, it's a controversial point. You know, if, if a woman has already been indoctrinated into that kind of lifestyle, if they've already got a taste for what they call modern living and the high life, you know, and associating with a lot of men, then it's, it might be very difficult to change them or convince them that their situation is not very good. What should actually happen is people should be brought up in that kind of understanding that they should see their mother at home and they should also want to be at home. And they should want to be married and have children and take care of their children, not that they go off to work. But rather, sometimes the opposite happens when they see their mother at home and they feel that their mother was not treat, uh, treated properly by uh, their father or the in-laws or, or their grand, grandparents or the, some family members, then they rather repel it. They, they say that I do not want to be like that. Well, of course, if, the, if they see something not people not treated properly, then they won't want to be like that. So we have to make sure people are treated properly. Then only they can be happy. So what is the proper treatment, proper treatment for the Mataji's? What, uh, uh, what is the responsibility of the head of the family? Uh, females of the family properly. What is in the scripture proper the treatment? Well, the head of the family's got to look after the family. He's got to meet his responsibilities, his commitments, make sure everyone is kept happily engaged and and that they're taken care of, the needs they're taken care of. Women should be also happy, they should be kept, you know, they should be happy to be at home and take care of their home and there are many things to do at home. It's not that there's nothing to do, there's so many things they can do. And there are ladies also and they, and they can associate with other ladies. The ladies come together and meet together, just like in uh, in the Middle East, if in the Middle East often you go to programs there, you'll see there's generally the ladies there, they don't work and they, they meet together with other ladies and they have nice programs in the daytime. Okay. And you see that ladies in this kind of lifestyle can be very, they can be very happy and they have, they have friendship with other ladies and they meet together and they have bhajans and classes. And so they're they're not short. They're not they're not suffering. They're very happy. They don't want to go to work. They don't even think of it. Okay. And a lot of ladies who are at work, they're only there. It, it's more due to financial pressure than anything else. The, the problem comes, the, the financial pressures, the needs, 
the different needs, what they think they need. They need, they, they need, we need this car, we need the new house, we need the children going to a better school. And they need, oh, what they think they need. And, and to get it, they work. And they go off to work, working, working, all day. And, and the home suffers, the home atmosphere is lost. So like if the husband is not able to support the family financially properly, then we have a need to yeah, well, the problem is that the, the, the demands are greater, maybe, than what the husband's able to meet. Okay. They have, like, if you, in, in countries like in China, they have a, pro, they do propaganda, they say, men and women are equal. You see, and the idea is the woman should go to work. So th this happens in China, you know, everybody, all the women go to work, men also go to work. Uh, but Prabhupada said this is actually cheating, this is taking unfair advantage of the ladies, because the ladies are the ones who have to give birth to the child. The man doesn't give birth to the child, it's the, it's the woman who gives birth to the child. And, she's also go and if she's also going to work, and if she's going to work and she's carrying the child, you know, it's, it's not very easy for her, it, it's very difficult. And because women go to work, that's why you have things like people, oh, I'm, I don't want a child, they have abortions, and so many other things they do, so that they don't have children. It makes very demonic civilization. Right? Yeah, thank you very much. Just another question uh, from another topic, if I can ask. Yeah. Uh, this is regarding the divine and demonic qualities. Uh, as we are discussing about the demonic qualities, we are like considering uh, one uh, is generally a mixture of both divine and demonic. Sometimes uh, the divine one comes up or sometimes the demonic one comes up. So you mentioned that one can either be divine or he can either be demonic. Yes. He cannot be in between. Mm. But generally we see that uh, in our own character, in my own character, I see that I'm, I'm somewhere in between myself. Sometimes. Well, it's sometimes, sometimes we display the divine quality, and sometimes we bis display the demon. It's like there are two, there are two in 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 our heart. You know, like two wolves in the heart. One is a good wolf, one is a bad wolf. So, which one is going to be prominent will depend which one we feed. You know. <laughs> Sometimes the demon comes up, sometimes the devotee comes up. And so we're like that, we're always trying to struggle with the two sides. That's why uh, Lord Chaitanya was told by Lord Nichananda that in this age you have to be merciful. In previous ages Krishna killed the demons, but in the Kali Yuga he cannot kill the demons because the demon and the devotee are both in the same body. And in order to understand it better, uh, you see, uh, a devotee, when, uh, like I hear uh, in a lecture or I associate with devotees, I go to the temple, I uh, tend to uh, uh, understand the divine qualities and have a desire to uh, cultivate them. But simultaneously, uh, staying in uh, amongst the family members and, and in the work environment, dealing with other peoples which are uh, demonic also. We do, uh, uh, and uh, this uh, big uh, influence of social media, big influence of these smartphones, and you know, you have everything at your fingertips on your smartphone. And uh, simultaneously, these things are very much popularized, very much glittered, uh, 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 are very much advertised. The de uh, demonic natures of the people and so called uh, the ideals of the society. Need they be the cricket stars, may they be the movie stars, may they be anyone. They are very much popularized and they have a lot of glitter, which is also very alluring. So, uh, how, is it, uh, how does a devotee, how uh, is one able to uh, cope up with such, uh, such external society atmospheres and stay peaceful and stay intact with his own process of devotional service? And especially something like uh, 
when the quality of self control is it is mentioned that dharma viruddho bhuteshu kama asmi now it is it is obviously not uh, they, they uh, not feasible or they do not even wish for, to have this desire of people with demonic quality but simultaneously if, if one is in grihas ashram we're talking of this thing it is very uh, difficult uh, it, it becomes very difficult if one is living in a society in which such things are uh, uh, talked of being impractical or such things are talked of being uh, not uh, not possible also so the devotees also tend to have that they may be in the scriptures but this is this in practical in this age yes so, so we have to protect ourselves every day we have to have a good sadhana you have to have a good pro morning program you have to wake up early you have to sit and chant your whole the holy holy name you have to study scriptures you should be careful about what you eat only eat prasada like if you have a good morning program it will give you the strength to protect yourself just like you know now there's a lot of disease and uh, dangers of this virus and uh, you, have, we have, you have to protect yourself how do you protect yourself proper diet and also association don't get too close social distancing <laughs> All these things. So the same is true in the spiritual path. You want to protect yourself. Don't get too close to all these things. Don't get too entangled with them. Do good sadhana. Keep, keep yourself regulated. Regularly chanting and hearing. Then you can protect yourself. Just like doctors, nurses, they have to deal with all these things every day. They're very careful to protect themselves. So we are also devotees, we have to protect ourselves, guard against this contamination. Right? Thank you very much. Thank you. Any other question? Yes, Maharaj, we have still three more hands. Okay. Uh, the next one is Indra Lekha Kripa Maharaj. Uh, Hare Krishna Maharaj, my question is that you said that we should have nice devotee children, you know, in the family. So what happens is children will be like uh, in the beginning they will do the sadhana or whatever the chanting all those things but as they grow up or something they will leave that habits so how we can understand why like why they have become like that is it because of the karma what are they accumulating now because of the association now in this life or because of the karma of previous life they have to go away from that and they're going away from i think that. it's more due to association in this life I think it's more due to their association in this life, somehow they've gone away from it. But there's no loss on your part. You did everything, you did your duty, you gave them the chance. So yes. hopefully, gradually, eventually they'll come back and they'll remember. Sometimes they grow up middle part of the life, the youth, you know, they want to experience these other things and they just go and, and investigate and see the material world. And hopefully they'll be horrified and come back and be devotees. Okay. I have another small this one after Sachinandan Prabhu's this one. Uh, Maharaj, you said that uh, women should not work and all. But sometimes what happens is there is a single mother or some other reasons for the sake of uh, the house. This one she has to work. Mm. Not for like uh, any uh, big, what to say, for comforts or material sense enjoyment, but she has to work. She yes. has to earn for the family. So what will be the position for her? Well, she should just be careful what kind of environment she's working in. She doesn't want to be working with a lot of men. Mm. Try to avoid that kind of situation. Try to find work where she can work with other women. Next we have uh, uh, Ananda Vilas Prabhu. Yes. Hare Krishna Maharaj Dandavad. Hare Krishna. Maharaj, I had this question. We spoke about all those qualities uh, in detail uh, very nicely. But um, does chanting Hare Krishna Mahamantra uh, automatically we get the qualities or how much percent of endeavor and how much does chanting uh, play a role? 
developing these qualities. Well, definitely the chanting of the Hare Krishna mantra will play a role. And, and we do learn from the philosophy that simply by cultivating our Krishna consciousness, all the good qualities will develop. So by a contact with Lord Krishna through his holy name, we will purify our consciousness and these qualities will awaken. We will develop them. Of course, not, they're not all relevant for each and every devotee. We said some are, it depends on our particular ashram and varna. Different people need different qualities. But the idea is that by cultivating our Krishna consciousness, then we will develop whatever good qualities are required. Certainly, it's a major part. This is how we actually develop these qualities, by devotion. We, we don't have to individually try to get these qualities. We simply have to engage in devotional service. Like I was one of the, the, we were doing the exercise, what are you going to do to cultivate this quality? How are you going to become more determined? I'm just going to be a devotee, I'm going to go to the morning program every day. We can become determined. If we're determined to go to the morning program every day, or I'm, going, I'm determined, I'm going to go to Mongol RT every day. And if you, if you, then you will develop the good qualities you'll start to develop more and more determination, it will come, just simply by taking part in devotional service, by following the process. No meat, no fish, no, no, no this, no, no nonsense. That means we will develop our, all the good qualities. Prabhupada said we're changing the pavriti and the nivriti, what we're going to accept and what we're going to reject. When we become devotees, as we become fixed in devotional service, then it's natural for us to reject all the bad things. It's just natural, it's automatic, we don't even think about it. Right? Yes, Thank you so much, Manas. Very excellent. Another... And That's all Maharaj, uh, nobody else has raised their hands, Maharaj. No one else? No one else, Maharaj. Okay, so we'll finish here today. So I'll meet you on Monday. Thank you, Maharaj. Thank you very much. Srila Prabhupada ki. Gaur Bhakti Vrinda ki. Hare Krishna.